Good morning, this is Angela with a cup of tea on Thursday, June 23rd, 2011. I'm nailing it this time. This is it. I've done this a bunch of times. It's been morning at the improv and I'm just not even going to go into the details, but yeah, I think my guides think it's funny and there's a lot about spirituality and humor, but I think we're going to cover that one in another webcast, maybe Monday, because <laughs> I have to cover this one today. So to get started, I want to talk about um, pretty much a quote by the scientist Marie Curie that says, nothing in life is to be feared, it is only to be understood. That is so true in terms of the energetic and spiritual and metaphysical world and what's going on around us today, in, in our world today. There's some phenomenal things happening um, and even just new worlds of science and technology and stuff, things that we're just discovering that have been run into our noses for so long that we're able to actually show scientifically. A perfect example of that is in quantum physics they've done a whole series of experiments that have shown th that if we l watch atoms and molecules and expect them to do something that they actually tend to do it versus when they're not being watched and they have a very different way of acting when they're being watched versus when they're not being watched shows a lot about um, proof in the effects and how energetic healing modalities work like Reiki and how we create our realities and how we manifest a lot of what's, uh, you know, what's, what's around us. So if you look at this, this, the experiments and what they did and how they turned out, it really gives a lot of room for thought for even the biggest skeptics. And the book that summarizes a lot of those um, research experiments is The Intention Experiment by Lynn McTaggart. So if you get a chance and you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. It is an excellent book. And if you know a speaker around you know, in your area that is talking about something along those lines, go and see it because it's a great presentation to see how they set up those experiments and how they work. And on that note, the more I open up and talk about what I've been feeling and seeing and experiencing with others um, in terms of the expanded universe, as I call it, the more I have people calling me to say, I had this happen and I didn't understand it, or this has been going on with me and I just have no idea what it is, and or my husband or my wife or my friend, can you talk to them because, because I, I because you know this is just you know freaky, freaky is what I hear a lot, <laughs> creepy, freaky, odd, um, amazing, you know, and it it all it, it's all amazing. So. <clears throat> Here's the thing, we are all opening up again to our expanded universe and to a much larger level of consciousness than we have been. So we have to start accepting things that are out of our box of reality and in doing that you can deal, deal with them in three different ways. One is you can push it away and choose to ignore it and say I do not accept this, I'm not going to look at it, yeah, I'm not going to look at it, it's going to go away. Second is to be afraid of it, actively afraid of it, and which can cause fear, anger, a whole bunch of negative emotions and manifestations in your life. And then the third would be to um, learn about it, to accept it in your heart the way you can accept it through your experience and, and then assimilate it into your life as part of your reality. So there are three different ways of doing that, but at the same time, they tend to be sort of, um, the way our, our society tends to run today, it tends to be a phase thing where almost, where a lot of people I talk to have gone through all three. I've gone through all three of, of pushing it away and ignoring it and then being afraid of it when I opened up like a book as I call it and because I didn't understand, I didn't understand what I was feeling, I didn't understand what I was seeing, I didn't understand a lot of um, what was being shown to me and all these things that I suddenly that were in my reality that were just so completely foreign to me and then I started exploring them started starting working with it starting starting started to um, know how to work with it and use it for the for my best and highest abilities and then accepted it into my life into my reality so a lot of times I've just found that um, if we fear something, 
we tend to push it, we do tend to push it away, or we tend to push it we, deep down. And what happens a lot of times is that will come back up to haunt you at some point. Uh, you know, we say, okay, if we don't pay attention to something, it'll go away because it's not in our reality. It can. Uh, it depends on the way it's approached. It's, you know, when you start thinking in manifesting terms, it's like, okay. But if you are pushing it away because you're giving it energy because you're afraid of it, that's the other, that's, that's the little caveat. So I met somebody recently, and here's a perfect example. I met somebody recently who was a, vi uh, a math teacher out in California. She was, and she was very black and white and analytical, analytical as you can get. And she told me the story of how she's come to sort of where I am today, same kind of thing. And um, I think it's only been a year for her. And she was talking about how she suddenly knew things or heard things or saw things, and she didn't understand them. And she tried pushing them away and ignoring it. And it grew and grew, and it finally, she even used this, this terminology, she manifested a car accident so that she could be laid up, and she couldn't look at anything else for like a month, or two months, or something like that. And she said she started going to a psychologist during that period of time, thinking she was going loony, and would notice that the psychologist was writing notes in the margins, writing notes in the margins, and one day the psychologist looked up and said, you know, you're just having a spiritual awakening. She could tell the story without her eyes getting all teary because she still was coming to terms with that within herself. But now she's at that point of putting it up in the light and accepting it, talking about it, and realizing, oh, wow, okay, I'm not the only one. And there are plenty of other people that are doing the same thing or going through the same thing. Yes, expanded universe. We're all going through it at one point or another. It's sooner or later or sometime, but it's happening. And um, so... One of the things that are that's really important in terms of when you do start wanting to learn and wanting to assimilate with that expanding universe is to cough up all that stuff that's the, at the bottom of the tank. I always call it sort of like cleaning out a fish tank when you use this like this water um, suction thing to pull up the gunk that's all at the bottom, and then what happens is it also gets in the water until the filter can pull it out. And that's a lot of what happens is we do all this clearing stuff and we start working and a lot of the energy healing modalities have to do with pulling all that up and clearing it out and letting it go or accepting it. And it's really important to start doing that as you start working in this world because the more you can do that, the more you clear out, the clearer you are and the more secure your connection and pure, uh, secure and, and pure your connection is with what's around you, with what's, with what's, with what's in you and what's in you know in the expand in that expanded universe. So, I you know, a perfect example is, and it doesn't matter like how long you've been doing this or working in this. If it's one day or if it's been twenty years, I actually was working with somebody yesterday who I was teaching them an energy modality, and um, this person's been working in in this stuff stuff for a long time doing constant clearing, constant clearing, and some really deep stuff came up as exercises during the teaching process, and everything is perfect, everything is timed perfectly, that's why it happens. So it doesn't matter whether, you, so don't think, oh my god, I just have too much. No, we all have stuff that we're clearing up, but the more we clear up, the easier it is to pull out one thing and say, oh, I need to just get rid of this, or I need to look at it and examine it, understand it, and then release it or assimilate it into my reality and and um, and let it go and move on. So on that note, I want you for this is your homework this weekend is to make a list of the five things that irk you the most. Now irk, irk meaning get you the most irritated in one way, whether it is fearful or angry or upset. Um, five of them. There's got to be five that you can pull up, and nobody needs to see this. This is very personal. Write down on a list. And when you do your mind clearing exercise, whether it's meditation or exercising like yoga or hiking, or whatever, at the big or just sitting to meditate, at the beginning of that, I want you to take for this next week the first item on that list and say to creator, to yourself, to your higher self, to your guides, however you work it and what works for you, that you just put it out to the universe and say, I wanna know with the most grace and ease. Grace and ease is important. We don't want to recreate any any traumatic situations. I want to know with the most grace and ease 
what the cause of the fear or anger or whatever is of this. I want to bring it to light and understand it and assimilate it into my understanding and release it. Say it and say it aloud when nobody can hear you because it gives it more energy like we were talking about words, you know, at the last webcast. And then wait and let it come to you. Don't, don't sit there and sort of don't, don't um, focus on it, but just throw it out there and then know and, and be confident that you'll get that answer. And believe it or not, it will come up. Whether you hear it in your head, things start processing, an event will come up, and hopefully with grace and ease. So like I said, if you say grace and ease, that's very important. <laughs> I've had that experience. Or, you know, you'll start seeing things, messages, or things will hit you, and they'll just, like, get this, I get this pull or this little, like, buzz down my back, like, oh, oh pay attention to this. And you'll be surprised at how, how much it, um, it'll come together. So... That's it. I'm hitting, good grief, 11 minutes. I gotta go. So have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you Monday. This is Angela with a cup of tea.